Hey, so welcome back, and this is another daily code problem. So today it's called maximum subsequence score, and it's a medium level heat problem. And so what you're given is a uh, two arrays here, and one's called nums1, the other is nums2. And you're also given like a maximum, I call it like window size in this case. And so what you wanna do is, with these two arrays, you wanna find out what the maximum subsequence score and you're given like this kind of scoring uh, definition here in order to figure that out. And the only other catch here is that you want it to be like the maximum subsequence, right? And so that's just partitioning this and just picking out uh, whichever numbers, but you have to maintain the order. And so that's if you swap these numbers around, you also have to swap them as well in this other array here. And so if we look at this first example, like if you pick the first three, the way you calculate the score, because you have a fixed size of three, is that you calculate the sum on the first array, uh, which is seven in this case, and then you multiply it by the minimum of those three corresponding numbers, which is one, and that will give you seven in this case. But you can actually get 12 here, and that's actually the maximum. And so to get that, you just grab the first number and then the last two here, and what that ends up being is 1 plus 3 plus 2 is 6. And then you multiply it by the minimum. So 2, 3, 4, the minimum is 2. And that gives you 12. Okay, now in order to actually solve this, it's really interesting. Like what you want to do is you can have for the number of subsequences, I believe it's what? Um, the n, where n is the length of the array, uh, minus k. Um, minus one here and that's like the number of minimum numbers that you can have for all of those possible subsequences and so you want to look at each of these like minimum numbers that you can have in these subsequences and always be multiplying it by the maximum total that you could have okay and so in order to do that what you're going to do is you're going to sort the tuple of these two numbers so you just put them in an in a tuple, so like one will be paired with its corresponding number two, and you sort it first based on its um, nums two number, and so that's going to be like your minimum numbers, right, coming from this nums two array, and so by sorting it by these nums two, you get to look at it, and you want to sort it on like the negative of that number, um, so you're looking at really the the largest number first, so you're looking at like the biggest possible number that you can have first, and then you're slowly looking at the smaller and smaller one. Um, and then with that, you're gonna have a heap. So you can just maintain what the total um, largest numbers are on there. And so you're always just popping off the smallest numbers so that sum of your heap is always the largest total it can be. Okay, now if that doesn't quite make sense, um, maybe the code helps a little bit. I found looking at the code was much more intuitive uh, for me so yeah so what you're gonna do is we'll define that heap and we're gonna have some response that we're gonna return at the end of this and we're gonna iterate through these values just like I said where a and b is the numbers in that tuple for nums1 nums2 and we're sorting it um, based on the zip of these two numbers from nums1 and nums2 and then we're also going to define the lambda so we can sort it based on the nums2 array. So we just say, okay, there's a key, it's equal to the lambda, and we're sorting it on, let's see here, lambda of Let's think. A, B, at B here. And let's just try printing it. Not sure if I did that right. Maybe a reference, yeah. So, how do you do this again? Nums2 at A, B, A, I believe. Uh, listeners. Oh, I see. Yeah, so it's AB at one. Yeah. Okay, there we go. I just messed up that lambda. Yeah, so you're sorting it based on 
the second number here and you want to take the negative of it so that you're sorting it from the largest number to the lowest number. Um, so the minimum starts with like the largest possible minimum. So you'd be multiplying it by the largest number. And so with each iteration, and you can kind of see the sorting order if you want to pause the video uh, for this example here. But with each iteration, you're going to basically grab the new running total and it's going to be equal to adding this new number a to that heap and so let's actually push that to our heap so uh, from collections we'll import uh, heap q i'm going to push to our heap here that number a and so then what we're going to do oh um I believe that's right. What's wrong here? Oh, um, from oh, I see. <laughs> I keep typing everything wrong here. Uh, from heap q, let's import heap push, and we'll import heap pop. There we go. Yeah, and so we also wanted to find this total variable, and so it's just going to be keeping track of what's like the maximum total that we can have for this current minimum sum. And so with that, we're gonna to add to our total and we're gonna to want to naturally return this response at the end. And so the only other constraint that we have here is we just wanna make sure that we're staying within that K limit. And so we just say, okay, if the length of our heap, of our heap is greater than K, let's just pop from our heap. So heap pop our heap and because our heap went out of bounds and naturally our total will also be uh, greater than it should be so we're just going to want to subtract from that heap pop otherwise then we actually want to consider it so like we want to say okay if this length is actually the size that we want it to be which is k let's actually get the maximum here so let's take the maximum of what we currently have and what our current running uh, total is Oh, uh, what's wrong here? Heap push. Oh, yeah, so I'm just not calculating it right, so we want to multiply it by our actual minimum, which is the current running number. There we go. Yeah, so that's the algorithm. I'll just go through it one more time here. Um, for but for like space compa capacity, it's just going to be um, O of n or O of k here, because you're going to be having a heap size of utmost k. Um, but then for time complexity, because you're like pushing it and you're sorting it, you're pushing it to a heap and you're sorting it. The bottleneck is going to be that that sort, um, which is n log n time complexity. But yeah, let's just go through this algorithm again, like. Basically, you want to sort the array on that pairing of the two inside of a tuple, and you're sorting it based on uh, largest to smallest of the numbers to array. And that's going to give you so that as we're iterating through all these possible pairs, you're going to be basically getting the current minimum that you would have in that array. And so with that, what you're going to do is say, okay, with that current number, let me get the maximum sum that I can have, or not the maximum sum, the largest sum that I possibly could have here. Now you could say, okay, well, what about like the first instance here? Um, like, uh, and why does the sorting order always give you the minimum? And that's because let's just consider like, I believe four, three, then two. So when you're at four and you're popping this off, like you don't even include that because you only have one number so far. But when you finally go down four, three, and two, that current number two is going to be the minimum, uh, this B here. And that's because, well, we, you don't need to consider, and you see that we don't have like a minimum that we're kind of propagating along because when we're 
sorting it in reverse order, the current number is always going to be the minimum. I think I'm trying to put across here. Like, you don't need to keep taking the minimum each instance because we're sorting it in the reverse order. Okay, so yeah, I hope this helped a little bit. Um, good luck with the rest of your algorithms. Thanks for watching.